All right. Um, now, that's interesting because I think we calculated about 0.22. Of course, I didn't write it down like a dumb butt. 12.25 um, divided by 58 equals 0.211. And, and curiously, I calculated up here about, oh, that's 22 amps. No, I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so I'm expecting about 0 0.212 amps, which is 212 milliamps total through the whole system this plus this plus this plus this plus this okay so that's going to be about 0.212 amps now i'm just going to turn the whole thing on and measure it and see what happens and uh keep my fingers crossed that it all works out i'm not worried about making mistakes guys it's just we, we all make mistakes. The, the biggest problem is being afraid of feeling foolish for making a mistake. Well, I tell you what, man, you can't let that bother you. You just can't do it, okay? I mean, life is too short, and things are too important. Um, so, you know, just, just swallow your pride, get in there, and do it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the knife that sliced my thumb a minute ago, and I'm going to cut here. And that's going to give me access for amperage. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I cut it here, like I said, I'm using amp meter to turn it on, and I'm hoping to get something close to 0.212 amps. Remember, no negative numbers, positive polarity, and let's see what we get. Get 191.4, 191.7, okay? Now I'm going to assume, and if you're a student out there, Play around, man. Ask questions. Build circuits. Have a good time. If you're learning this stuff as a as a guy, you know, who works every day, don't be afraid, man. I mean, put the fuse in, boom, blows up. If you don't, these will turn brown and the paper will start smelling bad. <clears throat> Trust me, I know. Um, what, was, what the hell was I going to do? Oh, oh, yeah, I was going to turn it on. There you go. And then I was going to read voltage because I want to see what my real voltage is and see if I get a number closer because with the circuit under load, there's a chance that my terminal voltage has dropped. And if I measure it here, I'm at 12.17. If I measure it here, I'm at about 12.15. So I'm losing a couple of tenths, so I want to get as close as possible. And here it's 12.1514. So let me revise the calculation and go 12.15 divided by, it was 50, 58.4, I think. Go ahead and add the point 0.4 in. 208. All right, so let's do this again. Remember, every time you move these leads, you're turning the meter into a jumper wire, and that can be dangerous if you work on big stuff. So don't get careful. Don't get careless. There's the 191. So we calculated about 200, and we're at 192. So that's you know three, four, five, six milliamps is among friends is not a problem. A little caffeine here. Um, So that proved that worked. And just to run through one of these, I'm going to take the 330 out, and, and here's why. I just It's in the middle. That's the first three. Oh, that's hotter than sun. Holy shit, that's hot. <whistles> okay, there you go, man. Ooh, okay. These things are really not designed for 12 volts. That was hot. I just took the wrong one out. Okay. So let me take this one out. Now the question is, when I take this one out, what happens to the system resistance? And here's the problem. People think, oh, well, yeah, you took a resistor out, so the resistance went, um, you know, went wherever. Okay, well, the resistance just went up because you took a resistor out. 
And that's the problem with parallel, because when we take a resistor out, we remove a path. And when we remove a path, we close a hole in the bucket, and the flow goes down. So when we take a resistor out of S backwards, remember, it's S backwards in parallel. Okay, so the total system resistance just went up. Okay, now I can prove that, because it was 58. This is one of the biggest problems about not using the voltmeter exclusively, like I try to teach people, because flip, 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 flip. Where are you? What are you doing? It's just annoying. It gets annoying. It pisses people off. Okay, so this is now out of the circuit. My expectation is this is going to be higher than 58. And it's higher. It's 70. Okay, so that makes sense. Now if I, let me see if I can do this here. Here's my magic switch penny. Goes back down to 58. Take the switch penny out. Goes back up to 70. So I can recalculate. Okay. And I can say 12.15 divided by 70 is 0.173. So the total flow will have decreased from 212. And that would mean, remember when you move the red lead, you turn it to a jumper wire and you can kill somebody. Okay, so let's just be careful. So let's hope that when I turn this on, I'm going to get about one I got 161 little, okay. So it definitely went down. It went down about 45, 50 milliamps, okay. So that would mean that the current flow through here is 50 milliamps. Oh, let me turn this on. And that would mean that I'd be getting about, not 30, I guess 40? Let me see, hold on. Remember the switch has to be off for the amp meter to work. Okay. So 150, let's say 160 plus... Thirty-seven is one ninety. Oh yeah, that's right. Because it was one ninety. It was one ninety-two or one ninety-three. I think here's my magic switch penny. And it was one ninety-two. Sure enough. So one ninety-two minus thirty-seven. Might as well do this right. One nine two minus thirty-seven is one fifty-five. And it's at about 160, so we're, we're close. Not, okay, we're close. Okay, so th there, there's that. Now what I want to do is show you how each of the individual resistances doesn't depend upon any of the other resistances. Okay, so I'm going to cut each of these and open them. So those are the switches. The switches are now open, so we have no flow. Okay, and... Um, So we should have no flow, no flow, no flow. Damn knife. Um, okay, so we got no flow. Turn the circuit off, actually. That would help. Okay, so if I turn the switch on, now there's power to all of these. There's voltage to all of them. Okay, and what I didn't do, I should have, is show you the voltage drop across each of them, which I'll do. <sighs> I left that out. Ooh, okay. So. Just to show you how this works, and I want you guys to practice, practice, practice. Because once you get it, you got it, right? Okay. Oh, I don't need to. Pfft. I did it. 68 milliamps. So, let's see how good we are. Notice that these are all off, but if I turn this on, I get 67 or 68 milliamps. Yay! This is supposed to be 81. Yay! This is supposed to be 37. Yay! This is supposed to be 18. Yay! Okay, so... We calculated amperages based upon resistances based upon the 12 point something something volts, okay? So that worked, and it, it has to work. I mean, there's no other way for it to work. It has to work, okay? So if we put this meter on volts, what I'm going to prove to you when I remember to, oh, there it is, when I remember to, um, 
fix these and turn them on with solder. 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 I think I've had this spool of solder since... Oh my god, I don't even know. Alright, so I want to prove to you that the voltage drops across all of them are the same. And I guess putting it here would be helpful, possibly. Make it a little bit easier to read to figure that out. 12.11, okay? So it's dropping it all, dropping it all, dropping it all. This is where people get their heads screwed up. I don't care if this is a billion, trillion, quadrillion, babillion ohms, it's still going to drop 12 volts because the pressure in um, has to all go away so that when we come out on ground, it's relative to zero, it's zero. All right, so this is the size of the hole. This is the pressure that's pushing the flow through the hole. Okay, and I don't like using hydraulics, I use air. This would be your air hose completely, pretty much totally blocked off by someone who drove over it. Um, as the guy started to drive off the hose, it would go to 680 with a slightly bigger opening, then it would go to 330 with a slightly bigger opening, then it would go to 180 with a slightly bigger opening, then it would go up to full, so it would be total. So the, the pressure coming from the compressor is the same, the flow going through your impact is dependent upon the size of the air hose, the size of the chuck, whether or not someone drove over the hose, whatever. So that's how this works. So the resistance is going to determine the flow based upon the pressure coming in. All right. Um, so that's pretty much that.